What's up? Yeah, indeed. I'm shaking. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. <laughs> I'm Jared. I am Josh. Good to be here, man. Thank what's, you, brother. What's going on? Man, not a whole heck of a lot, man. Just man. chilling out, doing that thing. Yeah. I guess my, my story I can kick off with is uh, I don't have to worry about any type of uh, mistrials or anything like that. Is I get to go uh, do my civic duty, which yes, is sir. <laughs> the one thing that everybody tries to find some way out of. This past week, is I went down, gonna do. I got summoned for jury duty. I've I've been summoned before, and there was a time when I was sitting in the freaking box, gonna be on it. And I was like, crap! How did I get myself into this? Got called back the next morning to somebody that had plea bargain. I think. Uh, homie just wanted to see what type of jury he was going to get and he saw every one of us in the box he's like Pfft. and uh, got called back the next morning and it didn't happen uh, the time after that uh, showed up and everything just kind of worked itself out like by lunchtime we were gone uh, now it didn't mean you get to go home you had to go down to like municipal court or some such crap and just sit there and waste today but uh got called this monday and uh had my ace in the hole to get out of it just because i didn't want to do it <laughs> uh was my ace in the hole was i've got to be back here tomorrow morning for traffic court for another complete misunderstanding Un unrelated charge unrelated it's, it's a fake creation <laughs> and sure i just knew that that was gonna get me out because i can't risk being on a jury when you know, the next morning, like, if I don't show up and defend this, defend this ticket, man, I, they're talking about, you know, serious repercussions. And the old buddy's like, that's no issue at all. You can go pay that right now. I was like, oh, great. Because I, mean, I tried to, like, my issues with traffic tickets, usually, you know, uh, uh, you just pay them online in the state of Georgia. And then I went to go do that with this one and couldn't do it. So I was scared. Uh, like a mandatory appearance. I'm like, what? What could this mean? They're gonna try to take your license away. They're gonna, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, just sorry, just kill you. What? What are they gonna do? <laughs> and uh, it was to the point where I even uh, contacted a lawyer. I thought, well, what do I need to do about this? And it was it was all so much to do about nothing. One call. That's all. Uh, you know. It was uh, one of those kind of issues where it's like, why did y'all make this so... I think this thing's about to fall over. <laughs> Again, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with you. Yeah, we'll, but, we'll, go, we'll go with y'all. Uh, I just went, went down there, just knew that this was going to be uh, my way out of jury duty. Is I've, got, I've got to be back here in the morning to, for my other trial. Y'all going to <laughs> for real. put me away on. You put me on my own jury. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, everybody's like, nah, that's no issue at all. Just go pay it. And I'm like, well, I tried to do that weeks ago and I couldn't. So I don't, but apparently certain ones, when you have a mandatory appearance, you just have to go down to the clerk of court and pay it there. Mm -hmm. And, but in, in the meantime, I was just like, just so nervous about it. I'm like, contacted a lawyer and this rinky dink pump little ticket just to talk to a lawyer, like, oh yeah, it was just, you know, it's, uh, we'll send you a contract. It's like a thousand dollars up front. I'm like, uh, I'll take my chances with the court. So yeah, I would have grossly overpaid <laughs> what this uh, ticket ended up costing. So that would have, that was a smart move to not do that. But you know, when you see some of the things that can happen on these tickets, like it puts the fear of God into you. Uh, so it was just one of those kind of a long, ass a day that just got wasted. <laughs> this, this camera's just not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, it's I'll giving us fits, try to, man. Try to fix that for you. I turn the hill on me over there. Right, yeah, that goes. Yeah, well. If we start with it way up here, then by the end, we'll, you know, maybe we'll be back down in the floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all good, man. It's cool. We'll, we'll like mark from here. But that, but that was pretty much my story is uh, uh, set down there and luckily now that in our town, uh, the courthouse is a new part of it that back in the day when I got called you had to go you you went to uh, the courtroom and you sat on the Southern Baptist benches all day you can't feel your butt after the first 10 minutes 
Uh, so it's like, man. But luckily, you're in a different part of the place. You so, but it gets to be. After, it's after lunch, and so everybody's. I'm kind of thinking, well, this is you know par for the course. We're just we're gonna sit here and we're not gonna have to do anything. But uh, sent us to lunch, brought us back, and we're sitting there. Uh, he used to do that one thirty, and they were kind of like, well. We think we've got everything worked out, but we still need to have a jury just in case. So we're gonna take everybody, we're gonna call some names. If you're one of these people, then uh, you're in the- Joke's on you. <laughs> you're in the next wave of people that may or may not be whittled down. So it's like, great. Uh, so it's like roughly 120 some odd people in this room after I, I didn't get out of it. That's yes. what I'm trying to get at. Is <laughs> so uh, I can tell you this number because I was one of the unlucky few. <laughs> and we're um, 120 some odd people that we're going to call 46 things. I was number 46. Oh, so I wanted to going up front and trying to get at it, but push your your dog ears like, okay, brother. Yeah, it's not, don't worry, yeah, ditto. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you can go ahead and buy that ticket. You know what else no, you, you can do? You know what else you can do? You can get penciled right in for the final <laughs> cut. So that was the uh, story we was told. So I have no idea what the case was. Don't want to know. Don't care. But apparently, uh, it was like, we got to have a trial of a jury just in case we need you. And so at this point, okay, now I'm stuck. And uh, <laughs> there's the 46 people sitting on this side of the room, and everybody else just kind of like just looking at you like, what y'all going to do? What's gonna happen? What y'all gonna do? I don't know. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so, uh, luckily we didn't have to get caught. From there, um, you were gonna get called up to uh, the courtroom where the lawyers will you down even more. So it was, it was like, I was whipping out my <laughs> MAGA hat or just something to make me like, oh, we don't want him. <laughs> yeah, freaking uh, get, get away. Uh, Liz Lemon's uh, joke about how to get out of jury duty is the best, man. She like goes to the jury screening process dressed as Princess Leia tote the stack of playgirls. <laughs> it's awesome. Sweet. <laughs> For real, man. That's, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> Look, luckily, it all got sorted out before it got to that point and everybody was allowed to go home. Uh, but it was just one of those kind of days. It was like, man, I don't want to do any of this. <laughs> Yeah, now, last time I went in was actually the, it's the only time I've ever gone. I mean, I'm with you, like the jury selection pool annex was open, thank goodness. So we're just chilling out and reading books, and it's all good. Yeah. But as far as the, well, you're stuck here. What you gonna do about it? You, you, you're frustrated. Are you frustrated? Are you upset? I swear to God, they do that so they can yeah. run messages upstairs. Like, oh, we got a jury back there right now. Are you sure you want? Are, yeah, are you sure you want to take your chances? Because they've been here for nine hours and we won't let them be. So it's, <laughs> I, I swear I'm with you. It's like they do that to get us all riled up. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, they tell you right now. You can take your chances with the jury, but you're not gonna like them. Probably, you ain't gonna like them, man. We're gonna with sticks. Yeah, seriously, for real. We man. got this. Big ass TV screen down there. It don't let them watch it. It don't work. Don't it don't work. It. We turned it on, and then what we did? We broke it. Mm -hmm. We broke it. Can you can you play no more? Your brothers on. That's right, man. Woo! They're not happy. <laughs> that was kind of like one of the frustrating parts of it. Is it's a monster screen that somebody did finally don't like. Well, Y'all can't turn this on. They're like, oh, that's just closed circuit for the court. So, oh great! Okay. So don't turn it on. <laughs> Who cares? It's all good. We'll check that out. Oh god! No, no. Oh, god. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! That one of the time. One of the time that uh, I was down there and everything got caught off around lunchtime. Uh, there was one of the I, I can't I don't recall the uh, lawyer's name, but he's one of the lawyers that you see on Atlanta TV. Anytime you see him, he's usually defending the criminal and. His ass walks out from behind the chambers. It's like, oh Jesus! So, uh, it, oh, this is going to be a serious trial, and it ended up it. The, the, what happened and what the case was was a very serious issue, but it was all sorted out, and there was a plea bargain that was done before anything. The whole shebang of man got going yeah, on, man. but it still it. 
served us no good. We still just had to get down to the other courtroom and just be like, now I gotta sit here. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> that, that was the trippy thing is uh, having to do that. And this, the, it's, a, it's a lot different uh, than how it used to be because it's my first time doing it since there was a big, uh, it's been several years ago now, but it's how long ago it's been since I've had to get called was there was a, I think it was famous to the point where there was a uh, one of those lifetime movies made about it. The the guy that shot the judge in Atlanta, mm. and then uh, runs and meets up with this friend of his that you know was in town. Uh, basically, until that happened, when you got called for jury duty, you just walked right into the courtroom. You just walked right in. There was no uh, bag check, metal detector, none of that. And now it's it's a different world where, you know, it's like Fort Knox going in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's probably a good thing. But I, I hadn't had to deal with that uh, until this time of going down there and doing it. And so that was uh, the biggest change. But uh, it's just, it's never, it's never a fun day. It's, it's, it's a, on par with going and getting a license renewed or something like that. It's like, man, why do I have to, why is this, why do I have to do this? Yeah. Why can't I just do this from home or something? I'd make retired people do it. Some, somebody that would want to do this, let them do it, but you know, nobody, nobody wants to. I guess it's pretty much how it goes. Because even bold print across the summons, across the top, is like, uh, in at least in this state, it says, uh, uh, occupation is not grounds for deferment or what however it's however it's legally put it was you know uh, just because you a doctor you ain't getting out of this we don't we don't care that they're going to fire you and yeah. yes georgia's right to work so if your jury summons runs on too long they can and will fire you for yeah. it yeah <clears throat> and you you know and that's how it was explained to us when you know you're there and I'll, oh, but he doesn't say that you won't be fired, but he does say you will have a very good case to bring back. We'll even let you sit in front of this judge that you're probably going to be on the jury for, but he's not going to, you, your employer can try to start some ish over yeah. it, but yeah. uh, luckily the where I work, I mean, you're going to, you're going to be paid your whole $25 yes. for jury duty plus, you know, your tips you're uh, uh <laughs> whatever tips you get yeah <laughs> make some change yeah, yeah, for real man so you most places your employer will make up the difference they don't have to uh because I, I was sitting amongst people that a lot of them were like i'm not getting paid jack for today uh so it's it just depends on uh where you work and then there was a it's and it's just funny how uh some of these people there was a one of the bailiffs was a friend of a family, and then, uh, but even even something like that, you know, you can't just walk and say, "I know that guy." That's not going to get you off either. You just have to. <laughs> I know that guy. Out. <laughs> you, have to, you have to deal with it. But that's what that was one of the questions, and it's just some of the logic that people try to use to try to get out of this. Like, like dude, you're already in the forty six. So, but the 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 name of the judge got brought up, and so that set off a light bulb. One of these said, "Like, oh." Okay, what if, what if I know him and basically asking the bailiff like can can I say I know him and that'll guarantee me to get off and, and knowing that the bailiff can't be like yeah yeah you just go up there and tell him and then they'll let you go he's like they can't say that and even amongst bailiffs down there in the jury pool there the wrong thing gets said and it gets back to a lawyer they're gonna try to call that a mistrial uh, so it, but it just to me, what I would have said, how I would have said it, said, it's at the judge's discretion whether knowing you or not is going to allow you to serve or not. I thought that was the way to handle it, but instead he says, well, it wouldn't be good to know him. Like, oh, God. No, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, which, so, and, and, the, and that's not incriminating or anything like that, but the, the lady didn't like the answer. It's like, well, why? You, you know he can't. Just tell you that. Well, just go through Yeah, and leave. Home. Yeah, just go home. Man. Yeah, seriously. Anything short of him saying, well, why isn't your car started already? Yeah. We wouldn't have been satisfactory. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, there's just, just some of the stuff that uh, people try to do to get out of it. It's like, man, try to 
he's a little bit more discretion. It sucks, but like you're saying, man, you can definitely see why jury duty is not treated like voting because mm-hmm. people, you know, people don't do that. So yeah. it's like, man, <laughs> yeah. oh my lord. But I've only been, yeah, I've only been once, and it, it really wasn't that bad. I only went a couple of days, and it went real quick. But they were, I mean, they point blank told us they're like, yeah, man, he's he's about ready to crack. We just keep telling him we've had y'all down here, and he's not gonna like it. And I'm like, okay, whatever it takes, brother. Yeah, I think this is how they entertain themselves. I like, think so too. I gotta do this day in and day out, and it's it with some of these guys, it's a captive audience, mm. <laughs> and you. It's it's like uh, so some teachers that you had in school was like, oh, you just really wanted to be some type of entertainer, Performer, but, yeah. but couldn't hack that. So now you have this group of people that can't leave, literally can't leave. Yeah, that have to be here to put up with this. That's, that, that's what that's what it feels like. That was the long and short of it with the uh, some of the little bits I had to watch. Like, <laughs> bits. Yeah, this is it's really you know. Y'all aren't mic'd very well. We can't hear you. And they had the total Colonel, Colonel Sanders look going on. So I, I just don't get it. I don't get what's happening here. For real. I'm missing something. So that's, that's my story for the week. <laughs> I can dig it, man. I haven't had anything nearly as exciting as not go to jury duty or, or you know, get out of jury duty, thank goodness. I really haven't done much of anything. I watched the Bravos yesterday. I watched United yesterday. Very, very happy to go 2-0 and in the day. It's, it's kind of rare that yeah. we get a couple of wins in the same day, but we did, and that's awesome, man. So with the baseball team, it's not rare to get wins at all, man. That's, that's so cool. It's just it's very, very cool because basically the Braves are like the Hawks, but they win. Mm-hmm. It's super young, super exciting. It's real cool. We got our new closer yesterday, and, of course, he comes in and blows the save, but Acuna walked him off, and so yeah. it was like, that's awesome. I'm glad we won. That is great. <clears throat> it was Going into the trade deadline for the Braves, it felt like we have the same issues that everybody has. Like, oh, we got to get something going in that bullpen. What you know, are we going to do? Like, Nobody has a good bullpen. I don't understand why everybody waits till the all till the playoff push to discuss. Well, you guys shore up that bullpen. In modern baseball, that's the most important position there. It's yeah. just that's the way it is, man. Yeah. Def- even numbered defensive positions and middle relief bullpen. Because yeah. when you say bullpen, everyone thinks you mean closer. No, mm-hmm. I said bullpen because mm-hmm. I meant bullpen. Mm-hmm. And it's like, nah, man, that's that's modern baseball, especially when you get into the short season, man, because three outs here, three outs there, that's what you need. And it's like we say, I'm gonna, I am probably have already talked about this on here, but this is my next sporting Nostradamus thing. That th- This is um, the World Cup, or, or this is the World Cup coming to Atlanta. Yeah. Because back whenever they first printed the uh, blueprint for Mercedes-Benz in the paper. As soon as I saw it, I was like, that's being built to try to get a World Cup because it's it worked. It's <laughs> not it's not a football stadium. Mm-hmm. That is a soccer stadium. As mm-hmm. soon as you see it, it's like, that's what they're going for. We got the MLS club and we got the World Cup. And I think they were talking yesterday about the semifinal being played there, which would not surprise me, mm-hmm. man. And it's that's massive. That is so, so, so very cool, man. And it's going to work out great, too, because like we talk about, man, uh, Hartsfield, it's so easy to get in and out of Atlanta. It's, mm-hmm. it's the busy – I don't know if y'all guys know or not. It doesn't really matter, but this is cool. Hartsfield's the busiest airport in the country because, yeah. you know, in New York, you've got everything split three ways. And, I mean, LAX is LAX, but it's different because the main thing with Atlanta is everything comes through Atlanta. Everything, no matter where you're going, you lay over in Hartsfield. So they not. It's cool. It's it's great. I, I love that. I'm very excited. <clears throat> but along those lines of reading the tea leaves and trying to predict where it's going, you will have women playing professional baseball in this country. I think within five years, because that's the whole point. All you ever hear when you talk about women playing pro baseball, well, fast twitch muscle fiber and the the strength, and you know the. The arm strength, and that's all you ever hear about. Well, you know, the new trend now, man, is have guys that top out at 88 and can paint the outside corner, you know, pitching, just like it's always been done. And if you tell me there's not a woman on earth that can do that, I just don't believe you. And primarily because women making a living playing professional baseball in this country, it won't be unprecedented. It's happened before, and I think it's about to happen again, mainly because I've said this for the longest and it's the truth. It is the not nucleus, the nuclear option for baseball, but it is the not the official coronation of the nightmare scenario or culmination, excuse me, of the nightmare scenario for the NFL. Because the second Major League Baseball tells little girls, hey, you can do this for a living. 
It's not that little girls keep the NFL in business. It's just that the NFL's dying already. You get this huge influx of new fans to baseball, and that death is going to be exaggerated and put in even more stark contrast. It's just, and I can't wait because I, I just, the NFL just irks me. I, I can't stand it. And I like baseball. I like the idea of anybody. I like pitching. I miss pitching, man, because I really like that Greg maddox yeah. style stuff. I'm telling you, man, you're going to extend that bullpen, and you're going to have people come in that can get you three outs. And I said people that can get you three outs because, hey, excuse me, if you can do it, you can do it. That'll be massive. That'll be so massive. But the first crossover you have of somebody pitching in the major leagues and playing in the WNBA, is that's going to be yeah, – but. It's so messed up, man, because the idea of crossover, of doing the Dion thing is really cool. But, man, like all of the women's professional leagues and everything are all summer. WNBA, the, uh, I always forget the acronym for the soccer league. But everyone plays in the summer, and it's like, darn, he's yeah. not going to be able to do it. Anyhow, that's going to be real cool. And that's, that's coming because baseball's just done this for a long time now where ESPN and the NFL just keep trying to kill it and 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 kill it. They thought they were going to get it with Tommy Glavin in 94. It didn't happen. They were hoping that with making Mark and Sammy the biggest thing in the world, oh, steroids, that'll do it. Steroids, it's over. And it, you just baseball's baseball. It's going to be around forever. So just relax. Relax. Let baseball be its thing. Don't make an enemy. Just let it sit over there because if you piss them off and you make them an enemy, don't think they won't weaponize professional women athletes against you because they will. And I'm going to laugh. I am going to cackle when they do because I hate the NFL. Anyway, that's a very far beer. But I wanted to, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that on the show, that we're going to have – you're going to have everybody playing Major League Baseball before, before long, and that's going to be real cool because what happens is – Pitching is all that matters. You extend the bullpens. You put women out there. Then you find somebody that can steal bases. Find mm -hmm. somebody that makes good contact. Find Marla Hooch that can knock them over the yard, and then everybody's playing everything. Yeah. Why not? It'll be great, man. That's cool. Yeah, yeah man. It's even when even a good bullpen is gonna get run down. So it's like everybody has that problem with like, well, we need. You need better pitching, like yeah, like like everybody, everybody else. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, man. When you get to that short season, that's what it's all about: is yeah. can you field the ball? Can you shut people down and lay things? And that's the thing. And I'm happy to say <clears throat> that Dodger hate's a real thing, but there's been a lot of talk. Dodger hate this year has the twinge of the Red Sox coverage last year. We talked like talking endlessly about the Red Sox last year made all the sense in the world because they were really good. And Dodger hate this particular season has manifested itself and just how bad they are defensively. And you know what? I mean, you're going to make stuff up to talk about anyway, but whenever it's logical and you're actually saying something, then it doesn't bother me nearly as much because you, you do got to think, man. Leading baseball, I mean, they score a crap ton of runs and they got good starting pitching and that's all good. But you got to think, man. You just you can't give away extra runs in playoffs. You, that, you just can't live that dangerously. Ooh, Lord. You can't do it. <clears throat> I guess my other thing is that I, I meant to bring it up last week, but it slipped my mind. Is uh, everybody was going crazy about the? Uh, is it a beautiful day in the neighborhood? I is think the, so. The Mr. Rogers movie that that trailer broke and just, uh, just you know I'm. It's one of those kind of trailers that you see and like okay I'm there, but I, I think it. it it just made me want to watch the documentary again. Uh, that's what, that's the impression that I got with how people jumped and went all crazy. Mm -hmm. Is man, a lot. I guess a lot of people didn't watch that because yeah. see, I'm with you. It put me in the same. Mm -hmm. It made me as excited as that one did. I love Mister Rogers, so yeah. I just I, I was telling the man. It's mean to say it, but it's true. I didn't need a damn pop bottle to love Fred Rogers. That's mm -hmm. my man. I love that guy. He's exciting, and I like. So the, I like the celebration of decent people because we just yeah. we don't do that. We don't find nice and good people entertaining. So it just doesn't happen very often. So the documentary came out and it's like sweet. And now this one's coming out. It's like sweet. I'm totally I'm with you. And it's one of I guess it's one of the neat things about this film version is I I can almost guarantee you some of that footage that is that was taking place in this movie is the guy going to interview Fred. Towards the end, uh, that that's the end of the documentary. Uh, some of that interview features, uh, I can't say for certain, but it's got to be. And there, there's just so many high watermarks from 
the documentary, like, well, they've got to include that. They've got to include uh, the and and you know, it just it's some, something about it. I just I I didn't I didn't love it as much as everybody else was going on about it. There's something about it, as much as I like Tom Hanks, as much as I love Fred. That, that's that's a tough guy to capture, and uh, it just. And I, I kind of, it, it made me think a little bit, too, about when uh, when Anthony Hopkins played Richard Nixon. Mm. He doesn't really look like him the way you, th- you think, because uh, uh, most people that played Nixon, it was just pretty much just a character nose that they'd wear. Yeah. So there was something about, I didn't feel like he looked much like him, but I got, Tom's a good enough actor, he's going to get the guy down. So I... I, I I'm still to the point. I'm, I haven't written it off. Like, I'm not gonna watch it. I just, I, I didn't love it as much as everybody else yeah. that I, I was hearing talk about it. Talk about it. I was like, you know, what? Did I not see the same trailer? Is there a different one? Yeah. It, the, the trailer builds up to a, a great moment that I, you know, I, I hope it's true. I hope this happened on the train. And uh, if, if not, then you know, I, maybe I'm getting worked. But it was, it, it was, it's an awesome moment. Yeah, man. That uh, and when you know. Uh, just there's uh, Lady Lady Elaine, and uh, and, and it's it's kind of I I, I can get it because apparently she was asked about being in the movie and she declined just for that reason. Where she's like, you know, I I, I wish him all the luck in the world, but I just I just you know that's, that's I think this might be a little bit too personal for me to show up and. And play myself in this movie. I just don't think I could do it. And it's like, I mean, I, I, I get that. I couldn't, oh, ima- totally. could, could not even imagine. Sure. Uh, being in that position, and she's been in, you know, she's worked and been an actor for many years past that. But it's like, you know what? Just, I don't want to show up and recreate my, you know, any anything from the show. So it's not yeah. going to do that. But. Uh, what a cool attitude to have, though, man. Because yeah. the entire thing is like, man, I'm not feeling that, but y'all mm-hmm. knock yourselves out. Yeah. See, that's cool, man. Because if you're just bitter and crusty about it, you're gonna have a fit and try to maybe not trying to shut yeah. people down, but you're at least gonna talk crap to get the attention. So that's clearly not what's going on here, yeah. and that's that's always rare to see, but it's mm-hmm. nice to see. Like, well, that's cool, man. That's uh, <clears throat> and one. I guess I, I didn't see it in the trailer, but it feels like one of those. Scenes that they at least have to delve into uh, the Senate hearing that's in the documentary. That's like that's you know it's it's, it's hard to pick the one <laughs> uh, scenario from the well, I think it's well, won't you be my neighbor was the name of the other one. Yeah, I, I get the names confused. Uh, that that was one of the tough parts to sit through and watch is him having to you know in front of Congress try to keep PBS funded damn near single-handedly and and did it and I, I don't remember the congressman's name but basically just sitting there kind of like you know rolling his eyes at Fred and listening to his story finally at the end of just and it's just a few minutes I think you can watch it on on the on YouTube it's just a couple of minutes he gets to talk and he's like it's like well well you won you you saved it and uh, just, you know that's, I'm talking myself and just going and, and really checking it out, and I'm looking forward to it a, a ton now. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way, man. But I really I'm with you. Like the uh, the reaction to the trailer, that mm-hmm. the, just the impression I got was that for a lot of people, this is their documentary. And what I mean okay. was it was so exciting and it was so neat to get to see it that if folks didn't see that, then it's all like, oh my gosh, you know. So yeah. if, if this is the first thing. It's, it makes a little, maybe not makes more sense, but I can see, I get where you're coming from. I get yeah. your excitement yeah. if this is your first one. Because yeah. I'm totally with you. The yeah. doc was incredible. I think Target's got that for like 10 bucks now. You can get oh, it for yeah. nothing. It's totally, totally worth it. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. One of the coolest things about it, one of my favorite things about it, is that Keaton came back to narrate it. Because oh, yeah. that show was where Keaton got his start. And that is so cool that it's like, yeah, we're doing yeah. a documentary about Mr. Rogers. And he's like, I'm he's there. A, he's a Pittsburgh dude. That's, that's, yeah, yeah that's the yeah. thing is he literally was on that show. He was a player on that show, man. And it's like, right on. That's so yeah. cool, man. Yeah, it's, just, it's, just, it's this weird past couple of years with Tom Hanks. It feels like he's just doing his tour of playing the old 
uh, playing dead guy, <laughs> playing real not not dead guy, but but real life guy. Yeah, real folks. Yeah. yeah, with the the Captain Morgan movie, the Sully movie, Walt Disney, Fred Rogers. Like, how many do you need, Tom? But for real, everybody, Jesus. every white man that's ever lived, Tom Hanks has the yes. box to tick, man. I must, I must, and. It, and he's he's salty over Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for real. Fine. Okay, Daniel Day Lewis, you play Lincoln. I got the rest. <laughs> it's like literally playing every other white dude in history. <laughs> it, it, it got me thinking that as love time as I do, or it just feels like maybe the the years back to back Philadelphia and Forrest Gump was was that one of the worst things that ever happened to him. Because it felt, it, it's weird how some actors, to me, it seems like they get, uh, you know, run down for this. But Tom, Tom avoids it because he's good. But it, it feels like you can, a lot of the movies since then have been, it feels like, is, is this just another Oscar grab? Mm-hmm. Because, and, and that's, I don't mean that to sound as derogatory as it sounds because he's good and I don't think that's what he's doing. It's just it feels like some guys get that pass and a guy like Tom, it just, that doesn't get brought up. I think the reason Hanks gets the pass for it, mm-hmm. I think you actually miss, mentioned it a moment ago, mm-hmm. and it's what was that first one that he got the Oscar for? Oh, he got Phil, Philadelphia. That's was right. One. That's right. Yeah. And anybody doing a movie now mm-hmm. about a homosexual guy in America, especially one in the 80s dying of AIDS, mm-hmm. That's an Oscar grab. When you yeah. do it, when that movie came out, however, yeah. that's Oscar-sized balls. Yeah. That's stones, man, especially for a guy who had been all comedy all the time up to that mm-hmm. point. Yeah. But taking that role at the time was ballsy, and I think yeah. that's what gets him. The, it's like, nope, never mind, because you already, you know, it. you could have avoided controversy and kind of backed your way in, but he didn't. It mm-hmm. was all like, nope, we're going to headbutt the crap out of this AIDS movie. And when was that, like 93 or 4? I mean, it, was, it oh, wasn't... Yeah. It wasn't even a decade after freaking mm-hmm. Congress is sitting there, Reagan and Congress are like cracking jokes about all mm-hmm. those, you know, those boys in San Francisco. Man, that's that's a darn mm-hmm. shame. Ha ha ha. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even ten years after that. And it's like, man, yeah. go on. And I, I, there's nothing to base that on except the gut feeling. If I was going to give him a passport, that's why. Yeah. But yeah, dude, I, I get it's tired. A, of it, it, it does get old. Like the the high water. A list every mm-hmm. single year. Yeah. It's like it, it, it gets old. That's you know, I, I don't, it's just in thinking about that movie, I just you started thinking about like, and it's I don't mean that to sound like a somebody needs, somebody needs to take that Tom Hanks task. He's had it too good, too long. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, but it, it, I don't mean it like that. I just, I, I just started to think like, man, the movies before, and it feels like the movies since have it's it's, it's and. It's, it's like a divide for me in my head. Maybe it's because maybe because that's what I grew up on. It felt like before there's big and a league of their own, and afterwards it's you know you you'll get a road to perdition and you'll get a movie like that every once in a while. But it just feels like man, uh, it's it's maybe it's where art and commerce come together. And it's like you know what, winning winning awards is fun, but it's you know it's still cool to get out and. Now I can just do whatever the yeah. heck I want. Uh, League of Their Own is one of mm-hmm. one of his more underrated ones. I agree, mm-hmm. and that one of the coolest things about that. And this is awesome. We were just talking about women getting paid to play baseball. That's mm-hmm. exactly what we were talking about. It's yeah. not unprecedented. <laughs> but uh, excuse me. One of the coolest things about that movie is that, as far as I know, he and Penny are still pretty tight. So it wasn't mm-hmm. that. But as far as as far as I know, I could be wrong. But I think that he took that role of Jimmy Dugan. For like scale, mm-hmm. scale yeah. to do Penny a favor because she mm-hmm. cast him in Big, and there was some dramatic mm-hmm. work in that, and nobody wanted him for drama, yeah. and it was just it was a really meaningful thing to him. So mm-hmm. you have that one come out, like you said, Oscar win, Oscar win, yeah. Oscar nomination, Oscar nomination, mm-hmm. and then there's this baseball movie that Penny Marshall wants to make, and he's like, "Sign me up." I, that's yeah. cool. That is a great story. That yeah. is the biggest actor in the world, and he's all like, "Yeah, put me on a bus. I'll be this mm-hmm. lecherous alcoholic that." Coaches a girls' baseball team, and yeah. one of my favorite lines in any movie ever. It's so messed up, but <laughs> it's whenever uh, David, I think it's David Stratham, goes down to the dugout and 
He's kind of chastising him for just basically he's like, you know, just sitting on the bench not doing anything. This is what leads to Gina Davis basically having to coach the team. And then Jimmy gets competitive and they go back and forth. And it's it's a great movie. But uh, he's going down and he's talking to him about, you know, you got to you gotta be a little more engaged, Jimmy. You got to, you know, you got to coach the team. You got a team of ball players here. And he gets all mad and he's like, these are girls, man. These are girls you want to sleep with after the game, not coach during the game. And he spits this gigantic wad of chaw on his foot. And he's just being all gruff and ridiculous. And so Stratham cleans his shoe off, and he's like, Jimmy, if we paid you a little more, could you know, could you be any more disgusting? And the reason it's funny is because Hanks is not being sarcastic. He's not being short. He's 100% serious. And he's like, oh, I could use the money. I mean, he's like so into it. As soon as he's like, any offer of any more money, he's all like, oh, really? It's, it's awesome, man, because I love that. I love the way he packaged that line, man. It messes good, dude. What are you offering? Yeah, seriously, for real. I'm listening. <laughs> But yeah, that dude is awesome, man. That and the, uh, it's insanely silly, but it's when he's on the bus and he's talking about how he needs a drink. So Gina, Gina Davis basically cracks open a coat because she's trying to get him to stop drinking or to drink less at least. And so Jimmy's sitting there on the bus with Gina Davis and he takes this big swig of Coke and does the most ridiculous Coke commercial. <laughs> it's freaking awesome, especially when you consider weigh it against the gravity that we just talked about. This is the foremost dramatic actor in the country at the time, and he's out having fun with the director that helped break him, doing baseball. I mean, it, it's cool, man. That's yeah. a that's a really underrated movie. Heck yeah! But yeah, you're t- it, 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 they add up. There, there's a ton. Green Miles in there, and um, oh, what the heck's the other one? Man, when, when they there for a minute, he was like Steven Spielberg, Steven Spielberg's personal actor. It's true. Uh, so that I mean, how are you gonna turn that down? It's like DiCaprio with uh, yeah. first Scorsese and now Tarantino. Mm-hmm. I, how can yeah, you want it? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show up. Yeah, you can't want the kid to say no to that. Come on, man. yeah, come on, dude. He, and DiCaprio's another one that felt like um, I think that it was something that people were projecting onto him. It felt like for several years people. Were, He's just trying to get that Oscar. He deserves it, but he's he just he's just too pretty. Like no, nah, it's he's, it, it it when it happens, it'll happen. Yeah, DiCaprio got um, Scorsese disease, mm-hmm. where it was just mm-hmm. well, it's been ordained since he was fourteen, and in Marvin's room that he was going to win one, and he's not going to win one till we say he wins one. That's what happened to him. Till we determine him. Whoa. Exactly, it's the exact same thing <laughs> with Scorsese sitting around for. Two and a half decades. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess The Departed's his best ever movie. Well, maybe if Hardly. you've never, maybe if you've never seen Goodfellas, <laughs> yeah. as good as it is. Yeah. Goodfellas <laughs> is, Goodfellas is still the benchmark because holy crap, movies of every genre afterwards have ripped off everything that Quentin Tarantino gets credit for. Mm-hmm. He actually pioneered in Goodfellas, and I like Quentin. Quentin's dialogue is wonderful. That really is. The two things about Tarantino, I think he doesn't get enough love for, and I hate to, to talk about Leo and. Clinton and not the new movie, but I ain't seen it yet. So I'm, I can't. I'm, I'm going to give it up and see it. I think this weekend. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. So I'm like, I, I need to. I just haven't done it yet. But I think that Tarantino's strongest trait as a director is he really does seem, in my opinion, to be the anti Kubrick. In that that guy really seems to love love actors, mm-hmm. the craft of acting, and people really doing unique things. I mean, you know. Samuel L. Jackson, you can't you can't create that. You write that on paper, and that guy shows up and starts talking, and you're like, "That was it. Yeah. That is ex- that's exactly I, that's exactly what I didn't know I wanted. Mm-hmm. I, and that's awesome." Yeah. And he does it all the time. Now, Samuel L. Jackson is probably his like okay. high water mark of like the best example, but he does it with everybody, man. I mean, yeah. it, it happens a lot, and so I'm just I, I really think that's that's cool. And I've got sidetracked, but anyway, I, I, that's. Oh, and, and dialogue. I, that, that was it. I don't mean to sound like I'm trashing him by saying all of his ideas came from Goodfellas, but all of everyone's ideas came from Goodfellas yeah. because see, that's the whole thing about Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights is the best Scorsese movie ever made by somebody not named Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Fantastic, yeah. man. Yeah. Love that stuff, man. And I need to watch that one again. I haven't seen that in a while, but I'm behind now. We've talked about movies, and uh, I, uh, I still I still haven't caught up on everything, but I did finish Richard III. I've been watching the Ian McKellen Richard III, which is... It's fun. Richard the Third's a fun story, anyway, man. Especially in a post Game of Thrones world where people are. It's kind of like the if this is your first exposure, 
you get excited about the new Fred Rogers yeah. movie. If you've never seen the bad guy as the catalyst of a story or the protagonist, get your copy of Richard the Third because man, if you like the bad guy, yeah. what a miserable bastard it is! And, and Ian's Boy, great. He has a story oh, for you. oh Lord, help! Richard the <laughs> Third is a miserable, miserable fellow. And he's going to do everything he can to get you right there with him. <laughs> um, uh, but speaking of documentaries, it's, a doc it's, it's several movies in one. It's a documentary, it's a movie about movie making, mm. and it's like loaded down with uh, cameos and stars in it. Uh, but it was the uh, looking, uh, Searching for Richard, Looking for Richard. Yeah. That, uh, Al Pacino. Yeah. Uh, I know he was in it. I don't know if he directed it or produced it or something like that. Threw a bunch of money at it. Yeah, for real. Uh, but I had a bunch of fun watching that. Yeah, dude. And it's got it's loaded with it's Pacino uh, and uh, Winona Ryder playing. A, is it Desdemona? I, I get a lot of the Shakespeare uh, ladies confused, but the the, the young uh, girl of object of Richard's yeah. affections is, is Winona Ryder, Alec Baldwin's the priest that uh, he talks to uh, uh, Kevin Spacey before everybody knew what they knew about him. And so just everybody that was anybody at that time, and, and I think it was like 97 or 8 that it came out, but uh, when, when, when anybody says uh, Richard the Third, that's what I always think of, because it's, it's like you, you, you're watching several things going on at once. It's uh, uh, getting it together, and they actually do... I don't think they do a live performance of it, but it's essentially a performance uh, movie is being done as uh, and, and a documentary at the same time. God, i got to check that out. It's, cause it's, I know. it's, it's, re it's really fun to watch it. Yeah. it I, for for several for several reasons, if, if you're getting the story Richard the Third mm. amongst uh, Pacino and some of his guys that he makes to discuss, and why is this the, uh, the the toughest role that Shakespeare wrote that all these uh, people point to as being uh, the most famous play with the toughest role for the lead and all this that another thing that they get into? There's that story. There's the movie about. A movie going on and so it, that is this if you remotely like Shakespeare if you like documentaries at all you or know, stagecraft you, yeah <laughs> yeah there's I'm Check still it out. I'm still kicking myself from this backtrack into our conversation about box sets criterion box sets mm -hmm. I bought a copy of my dinner with Andre I absolutely love that movie mm -hmm. I love it I have an obsession with food movies yeah. which that's not really one but they are literally having dinner yeah. <laughs> but just the idea and it's so streamlined it's probably if there's ever been a better stage to screen adaptation as far as it being just a true cover song if you want to call it that because they don't there's not a ton of one of the cool things about at this conversation with many people <clears throat> about the latest Les Miserables not the latest Les Miserables excuse me the musical movie version of Les Miserables mm -hmm. because the latest one was a mini series like the BBC did one uh, yeah, Dominic West and uh, oh I forgot his name I, for, I can't believe I forgot his name but it was good mm -hmm. holy crap that was good mm -hmm. but it, the um oh, what the heck's her name man darn um Oh, I'm sorry. It'll come to me. Anne Hathaway. Sorry. The Anne Hathaway one. And yeah. Wolverine. Yeah. And we were talking about, like, it's such a cool idea to do the musical version of Les Miserables in a movie because everyone talks about the, that performance of A Dream to Dream. And it works fantastically in a movie because you can get, like, the crazy, sobbing, losing your mind emotion. Mm -hmm. You can't do that on stage because yeah, on stage you want to hear you. Well, on stage you got to sing it. Yeah. So if you're like gasping for air, you can't belt those notes out. It doesn't yeah. work. So if you yeah. put it in a movie, you totally do that. Yeah. My dude, the Andre didn't do anything like that. There's nothing in that movie that you can't recreate on stage, and it's such a cool way to do it. It's a great movie. But that being said, I'm sorry. I'll dip back to Les Mis in just a second because I'm into it. Actually, let me do that first, and then I'll get back to Wallace Shawn. Um, but as far as the new depths of just despair for uh, Fantine in the Anne Hathaway Les Miserables. Mm -hmm. Get yourself ready if you watch the new one because they, they the bar's been set high, so you have to 
you're still chasing it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it is one of the more uncomfortable scenes I've ever seen in any movie ever. I won't tell you what happens. I'm just warning you if you watch it when she goes to the to sell her hair. Mm-hmm. Mm. If you need to mute it or leave the room, I understand. Yeah. I understand totally. You don't need my permission, but you have it. Yeah. Bouncing back, though. Mm-hmm. My dinner with Andre then wound up in a three-pack with I can't believe I don't remember what both of the movies are. But there's apparently a movie, Wallace Shawn did a movie called Vanya on 42nd Street, and it's very, very similar to... I, I think you're right. It's either Looking for or Searching for Richard. I yeah. know you're right. I just can't yeah. remember what it's called either. Yeah. But Vanya on 42nd Street apparently is a company doing Uncle Vanya, basically sitting around telling stories about doing Uncle Vanya. I haven't seen it, but it sounds yeah. Fascinating, yeah. and I'm kicking myself for getting Andre and not getting the darn box set because because it's in there, and I would love love to see that. And I know there's a third thing in it too. It seems like it's a reference to Carpentry. I, I just don't remember, but it's basically the Wallace Shawn three pack. And I'm like, that's, what was I thinking? That's, that's a good one to have. Yeah, man. I'm like, oh, this sounds so cool. So, but that's what that reminded me of. And I honestly haven't seen either one of them, and that's a bummer because I'm totally with you. Like the idea of a commentary track as a movie. When the subject is something that I dig, man, that sounds great to me, man. Heck yeah. It sounds great. That's what's up. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. But I got to get some movies watched, man. I think what I'm going to do when I get done, I'm going to transition, stay in Shakespeare, finish Richard III, and then I'm going to do Throne of Blood, and then I'm just going to run through them uh, numerically. Because that way, if I just if I overthink it, I'll never get any of them watched. And it's mm-hmm. like, make a schedule. Adhere to your movie making schedule, yeah. movie movie watching schedule. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. So I'm gonna watch Toshiro Mifune play. Oh darn, um, Macbeth tonight. I think, I, don't ask me why. Macbeth, Hamlet. They could not be more different. Mm-hmm. I, they are totally different stories. But for some reason, when I go to call the name, I have to stop. I do. Yeah. I have to stop and think about. Okay, Scotland or Denmark? I, I literally have to stop, man. Yeah. But I do love me some Shakespeare. Heck yeah. And it's good discussing it with the mind. Wow! That's what's up. Heck yeah, man. Shout out to Harley Race. <coughs> oh, what he said. Yeah, and on that. And my, my, my one Harley Race story was, I think, probably uh, the first needle in the vein of going to WrestleMania's was uh, when uh, 27 was in Atlanta. Yeah, man. And... Uh, had no idea how access worked or really was kind of getting the understanding of it and it's gotten even bigger now than it was then but just uh it, it was that same thing that people would do uh that they do now it's like trying to predict where oh who's gonna be here what's, what's, what's it gonna be what's, what's, what's gonna happen what's gonna, what's gonna happen <laughs> oh, oh no <laughs> and so because i because i had that moment because they had a. Uh, you know, each stage feels like it has kind of its sponsor. The to- Totino's Pizza Roll stage. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whatever game we're promoting this year, yeah. bullshit stage. <laughs> uh, and he's like, based, well, based on that, uh, this person's going to be coming out there. Uh, the Divas are always over here because they're going to play the Divas. But it, it was, they had a legend stage that uh, that's what it was called. And I was like, you know, hedging my bank, hedging my bets that, okay, it was this point of the session where we're getting ready to change out. Ron Simmons is up on the legend stage. I know that the line's too long, I'm not gonna get up to meet Ron, but I was there because Harley was on my little uh, printout of guys that are gonna be there. He's like, he's gotta be at the legend stage. And then, and then he walks by with a bag of Totinos, and I'm like, "Damn it, dog yeah, dog yeah, dog yeah!" I was, I was pouring blood, <laughs> full on flare yeah. as soon as he walked by. <laughs> and uh, you know, they did the little change out time, and on the legend stage, that because you're kind of doing that thing, picking out who's over there, who's over there. Oh, <laughs> Kevin Nash walks out. Ugh. And so I crap my pants and so, man, threw it at him. And that, that, that it's the uh the, the uh level of rejection <laughs> that these people have to deal with. That, that one of the girls working access when they felt kinda of bad, like, they're used to it, don't worry. But when certain guys walk out and like the 
<laughs> while it's there, just like clears out. Like, don't, don't use the rejection. Yes. Don't, don't feel bad for him. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 it was a mixed bag. Uh, there was guys ahead of me that were like super excited. I was thoroughly pissed. <laughs> I was thoroughly pissed because uh, Kevin Ash walks out, sits down. I got out of line. But okay, let me do my lap and see uh, where Harley's at. And the Georgia World Congress Centers, it, it's a big dude. It's a big place. You do, it takes a minute to get back to where you were. By the time I got out of the line, got back to where I was, I realized that I got back around, and now Kevin Nash is over on another stage. I'm like, what, what, what the hell, Groves? Uh, it turned out I did guess right. I had guessed right. So now I'm back to where I started. In the Legends line. <laughs> further back in the lines. Like, oh, whatever. So, uh, but it, it was, you know, it's kind of, um, there's not much more to it than that. It's, a, a, it's one of those kind of, to go to access and say that you met somebody, you, you don't feel like, I don't feel like I've met any of these people. It's just, they're kind of there and, you know, they're, the, most, most of them are a lot more cordial than you would think they would be. And that, that was my deal with Harley. It was like, it's just, it was like somebody's granddad up there. It's like super, super sweet dude just sitting up there and in in when i say it was kind of like that needle to the vein is like it was literally probably one of those that there, there have been many of them where it's kind of like i'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of nervous <laughs> waiting waiting in this line like what well, you know uh and it was one of those kind of i didn't I had nothing usually he had that kind of one-liner prepared something to say something I'm gonna, I'm gonna make an impression. It, it was one of those kind of moments, like, can't touch you. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> already, kind of you're already freaking raised, you, man. You, you realize who you are, right? I, I, somewhere in the, uh, I'd have caught full on Chris Farley. <laughs> you remember that time? That, that, time. Well, that one time you wrestled yeah. Jack Briscoe. That was awesome. <laughs> that one time you wrestled Jack Briscoe. <laughs> remember when uh, you took the mess from Kabuki? <laughs> didn't die. <laughs> That was awesome. So big his ass. Speaking speak of documentaries, there's, a, there's an awesome one. I'm, I'm sure it's got to be, uh, they're moving a bunch of them on high spots this week. The mm -hmm. uh, greatest wrestler under God's green earth is, go go check it out. Yeah, they, well, high spots has a network now. You can probably just go get it on your Roku stick and watch it there. Yeah, but, uh, they it's, tell it you rent pretty much anything. Yeah. And high spots is definitely worth hitting that library. They got some, they've got some unbelievable stuff, man. Heck yeah. But the documentaries that like you're saying, the, the Crockett one, mm -hmm. the Flair interview, mm -hmm. and the Harley Race one are totally worth your time. Race is a monumental guy. I love that dude. Mm -hmm. I remember <clears throat> Harley Race. He was in WWF when we were kids. He was wrestling as the king. I remember watching him wrestle. It was some, like, it wasn't a house show, but it wasn't a huge deal. It was, I think it was Saturday Night's main event, but it might not have been. But he and... Hogan were going at it, and of course I loved Hulk, and I wanted Hulk to win, <clears throat> and Harley made him look like God, because he's Harley Race. His first time ever saw anyone go through a table, because he just set Hogan up to headbutt him off the apron, and Hulk moved, and Harley goes to the table, and it's like, what just happened, man? Yeah. So it was just, I love that guy, and it was real cool, because I remember growing up, he was Harley Race, it was very cool. Then, Legends of Wrestling for the PlayStation 2, that the only two people on oh, earth yeah. that ever liked that game are both on your screen right now. Man, I built a tag team with him and Greg Valentine, and buddy, when I tell you I ruled the planet, I mean, we ruled the planet. We beat yeah. the crap out of everybody, and I love that. And then I got Fire Pro, and I put him on there, and that's been my thing with the mm -hmm. passing. I had him and Triple H go at it, and had him and Nakamura go at it. Nakamura posted an awesome picture on his Instagram the other day of having met him, and it's just like, it's, it's really cool when you see, particularly the Japanese cats, because those old NWA champions are such gods there. Yeah. Gods, but uh, my man, I mention him a lot on here. I hope a lot because he deserves it. But it's an account that I follow. Shoot, my hat. His name's Dante the Scrub, and Dante always puts cool stuff up, man. But he literally posted a picture, and it was uh, Harley and Jumbo and uh, Joe, the referee Joe uh, Higuchi, isn't it? Oh, cool. And yeah. that was the whole point was how <laughs> all, yeah, 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 <laughs> all three of them are gone now, and I'm like, oh, yeah. man. I've seen a lot of Harley tributes, but that was my favorite. I'm like, yeah. what a cool picture. That was really neat, man. And also, 
Bernie Racing Jumbo Saruta. My God, yeah. it's like, yeah. man, I, I'm glad that everybody there is a pro. Because if those guys ever shot on each other, I'd think the world would end. Yeah. <laughs> Honest to goodness. Like, good, my goodness. Ain't no stopping this. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, dude. <laughs> Just set the building on fire. That's yeah, for fun. real, man. The boy thinking we're just going to be on fire. That's such good stuff, man. I hate it, and uh, I I knew that he wasn't doing well. I did not know what his prognosis was till he passed, and yeah. I just yeah. I hate it for him. Obviously, you hate it for him, but at the same time, what we talked about, man, especially like ugly diseases mm-hmm. that really seem to want you know to really do you wrong before they finally let you go. You know what? I yeah. I, I, I hope that I, I hope the fam's okay. Same thing we always wind up saying, but it's because yeah. it's always true, man. Because there's people that, I don't know, those of us as wrestling fans, man, it sucks to lose Harley, but there's a lot of people that he's a lot more than just that, too. So yeah. I hope those guys are okay. Heck yeah. That's that's what, what I'm getting at. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. man. But we'll miss you, man. But uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's. Thank you. Man, yeah. he's, the man, he's the man that made Flair, for God's sake. He put Flair over at Starcade. Gave us Ric Flair. Heck yeah. Yeah. Got, got, got to be down with that. Yeah. Oh shoot. Yeah, man. Whether you, whether you're into ramen noodle perms or not, man, you got, <laughs> you gotta love, you gotta love Harley. You know, yeah. Harley Leland. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go check on that dad Santa kid. <laughs> oh man. Also, yeah, man. Check out uh, if you ever want to read a great story about um, Harley. It's in, I think it's in Foley's second book, and he's talking about wrestling with Vader and how. Harley was all excited to hard way him. He was all he's like, "Yeah, man, if you're all outside, you got to get juice." It's like, "It's okay, we'll do it the old way. We'll hard way you, and it's all good." And he says, "Foley, he's throwing out the ring and hits the ring, and he and Harley are face to face, and he's already bleeding." So Harley yeah. kind of dejectedly rolls him back in the ring because once again he doesn't get to punch Cactus yeah. Jack in the face till he bleeds. Ah, <laughs> very so disappointed. Flair tells tells an awesome story on his shoot. Uh, about uh, I believe it's Kurt Henning that has the you know, so you you realize you're working working Harley night but really oh god <laughs> he's like super young and uh, Harley's walking up to him he's like what's your finish kid <laughs> uh, <laughs> missile drop kick off the top I'll move <laughs> I'll move <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> Selling that. <laughs> For real, I'm not selling that. <laughs> <I'll move. laughs> yeah, based on that mess. You got what it. Else you, got? you got it, man. <laughs> hey, what's up? Heck yeah, man. Have a good one, y'all. Y'all be cool.